Right, so a while back I changed the bathroom light from a pull string light switch inside the bathroom to this light switch out on the wall. And this light switch was originally for the hallway light. Um, and what I did is I just disconnected all the wiring for that, just tucked it out of the way in the wall. Um, but of course that just meant that we couldn't use the hallway light, which at the time wasn't really an issue because um, we had this socket thing in there and it's broken so you can't even fit a light bulb in there. But what we've done now is, since we've changed the light in the lounge downstairs, uh, we've moved this old fitting up here to be used as the hallway light. So now it would be quite nice to be able to use this light again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install this new switch on the wall here and that will control the hallway light. And you can see there's also a second switch on there and that's going to control uh, some lights that I'm going to put up in the loft. So the first thing we need to do is put a new back box in here. So what I did is I got in with this uh, fishing line and I fished all the way through the wall to see what was inside here. Now the inside of this wall is all filled with this weird sort of cardboard lattice, which I think is because this whole wall with both sides of the plasterboard is just installed as one unit um, and it's connected inside with this like cardboard stuff. So it's a bit difficult to push the um, fishing line through, but I managed to get it through to basically about here. Um, and then it went solid. So I'm assuming that what is in here is some kind of vertical wooden beam. So I can't obviously put the light switch in any closer to the door frame, but in actual fact, that's perfect because I wanna have equal amounts of space um, on either side so that this looks nice and balanced. So I drilled an exploratory pilot hole using a masonry bit up at the top here, and that went through fine. So I know that behind here is just empty cavity. So now what I'm doing is I'm using this chop saw um, to basically just saw out uh, a square hole similar to this side, and that will be what we can mount the back box in. Right, so with this front piece of plasterboard removed, you can actually see this weird cardboard lattice that runs all the way through the inside of this uh, wall. I guess it helps give it a bit of extra rigidity that it wouldn't have otherwise, so probably not the worst of ideas. But um, for running cables and stuff, it really is a bit of a pain. Okay, so with a bit of difficulty, I've managed to get one of my fishing rods through. So that should give me something to attach a cable to, and then I can run it through underneath here and then up into this new switch. Okay, so I've now passed some cables through and I've wired up the new switch and it does seem to be working fine. Um, because this is a two-way switch, the wiring is a little bit confusing um, and having two different coding standards doesn't help. Um, we've got these old colors here and then these cables that I've just pulled have the new colors in it. Um, but I've, what I've done is I've labeled the outgoing wires um, with the new colors so that anybody who's doing work here can recognize that this is the, the standard wiring for the new style. Okay, so I'm just gonna briefly try and explain the concept of how a two-way switch works. Uh, it does look a little bit complicated when you see it here, but actually when you dig into the logic of it, it's actually pretty straightforward and quite brilliant actually. So to start with, let's just take an ordinary light switch circuit design in an ordinary house. So you would normally have these three cables. You have your live, you have your neutral, and you have your earth. Uh, the live is what carries the mains voltage, which in the UK is 230 volts. And it is alternating current, which means that it oscillates rapidly between plus 230 and minus 230 volts. And that switches rapidly back and forth 50 times every second, or 50 hertz. The neutral cable, as the name suggests, is always at zero volts. Um, and what that means is when you have the plus voltage of 230 volts in this cable and a zero voltage here, you have a difference in voltage between these two cables of either plus or minus 230 volts. As I say, it's alternating current, so it's rapidly switching backwards and forwards, but you always have a differential voltage here of 230 volts. And that is what any electrical device in the circuit is gonna to use to power itself. And then you have this earth cable, and the idea is if there was any kind of short circuit in this device, which could cause you to get a shock if you touched it, uh, or could potentially cause a house fire, 
This cable will then carry away that excess current and dissipate it into the earth, which is literally why it's called the earth cable. Um, in every house, there'll be a stake driven into the ground. Um, and also these earth wires normally connect to pipe work as well, like water pipes or gas pipes, which also run through the ground. So the idea is that there is plenty of capacity to carry away any excess current and dissipate it safely so that it doesn't give you a fatal shock. You'll notice that this earth cable is also connected to the light switch, and that is also for the same reason. If something went wrong with this light switch um, that could cause you to get a shock if you touched it, uh, hopefully that current would be carried away by the earth cable and dissipated into the ground. So you can see in this circuit that we have the live, the neutral, and the earth connected to the light fitting, and the live cable runs through this switch. And in this position, the switch is on. So the live runs down this cable through the switch out the other side and the light is on. If we turn the switch into the off position, you can see that in this position, the power runs down into the switch, but there's no connection to the other side, which goes to the light fitting. So therefore there is no circuit and the light will be off. With a two-way switch design, things are a little bit more complicated because what you want is to be able to turn the light on or off from either switch and it shouldn't matter what position the switch is already in, uh, you should be able to turn the light off or on from any position at any time. The main difference in this design is that you have wiring to both poles of the switch. So in the single circuit design, you only have wiring to one pole. If the switch is in the other position, nothing happens. There's nothing connected to the side. Whereas in this switch, you have connections to both sides of the switch. So first of all, you can kind of ignore the green cable because that's just the earth which is connected to both light switches, which as I mentioned earlier, is just there as a protection uh, in case there's some sort of a fault with those switches. So this is representative of what you would find in most ordinary mains cables. You have a live cable, you have a neutral cable, and then you have your earth. And this is known as two core cable. So even though it has three wires running through it, only two of them are used for carrying current, and that's why it's known as two core cable. This, on the other hand, is three core cable, and you can see that it has three different wires which are used for carrying current, plus the additional earth wire. So between the two light switches in a two-way switch design, you would have three core cable connecting them. And you can see that the brown cable is connected to this top one, and then the black and the gray cables are connected to the bottom two. And then on this switch, which is gonna be the closest switch to your light fitting, you then have these additional connections. One of them comes off the main circuit and the other one goes out to the light fitting. So let's run through a few scenarios and you can see how this design works in practice. So we've got our live feed coming in here and it's gonna go into this connection here. It's not connected via the switch, but it is connected to this gray cable. So it's gonna go down the gray cable and that's gonna end up here. In this scenario, the switch is connected to this, so it's then gonna go back up this brown cable, back into the top of the switch, down to the bottom, and then down to the light fitting. So therefore, the light is gonna be on. Let's change this now to the other position. So in this scenario, our live feed comes down here, it goes into the switch here, it goes up to the top here, and it also goes into the gray cable. So we've now got live going down the gray and the brown cables. And on the other end, they just connect back that way again. So you've just got, essentially you've got one wire which splits into two but then kind of connects again. But you'll notice that there's no connection to this brown cable which goes to the light fitting. And so in this scenario, the light is off. Now let's turn this switch to the other position. So now we can follow our live down here and it's gonna go both into the brown and the gray cable. Let's follow the gray first, and if we follow that to there, we can see that that's a dead end. It doesn't go anywhere after that. But if we follow the brown cable, it then connects to the black cable, and then the black cable goes back up here. That then connects to this brown cable, goes to the light fitting, and the light is on. Now let's turn this switch again to the other position. So now we have our live coming down here, and it goes into this connection. There's no connection on the switch, but it does connect to the gray, so let's follow it down there but now we have a dead end here. So now we have no connection back to this live cable and therefore the light switch is off. So there you go, it's pretty smart, but you do have to make sure that you wire the cables the correct way because this can only work in one combination. So you have to be quite careful when you're wiring up a, a two-way switch that you do it exactly in this manner. Right, so if you ever need to twist a whole bunch of cables together like these earth cables, which I'm gonna connect, 
Um, there is a quick way to do it, and that is basically to use a drill. And all you have to do is basically feed the ends of the cables into the drill. And then you can basically pin them at the base using some pliers. And then just twist. Et voila! And there you go. There's no way that you could ever do that as neatly by hand. And it took a quarter of the time. So before I can put everything back into the wall, I need to run a second cable up this wall and into the loft. And that's going to be for the loft lights. That's what this second switch is going to be for. Okay, so here we are up in the loft. This, you can see, is the cable that I ran previously to the bathroom light. Um, and we now need to run another cable basically somewhere around here and that's going to go down to the switch on the wall down there. So this is the wall anchor which I used for securing the panel in the bathroom to cover the hole. So we know that this is pretty much up against the wall of the bathroom. Um, so if I drill somewhere around here, basically just on the other side of this wooden beam here, that should get us more or less directly above the switch. Right, so actually there was an unexpected wood beam underneath this plasterboard here, which was a bit of a surprise because there wasn't one further along here. So I managed to get through it okay. And I'm into the cavity there. So we'll now run a fishing line down that hole and hopefully it should come out essentially above the switch box. Yeah. All right, success. The uh, fishing line has come through there. So I can now attach my cable to that and pull it back up into the ceiling. Right, so our switch is all in place and everything is working and we also have our switch feed ready uh, for the loft lighting which will be the next job. Okay, so it's been a number of days since I did the switch on the wall and in the meantime we have had a new boiler fitted. Very exciting. So we now have proper mains pressure in the bathroom. We have no header tank anymore. It's all gone and we can finally have a proper shower, which is rather nice. But yes, there were a few things that we weren't entirely happy with with this installation, so that I will talk about in more detail in a future video. But for now, what we are going to do today is install loft lighting. Um, I'm not going to do anything particularly fancy. I'm just going to put uh, a light fitting on this side and then another one on this side. Um, and that will just basically mean that we can actually see what we're doing in here. Okay, so what I've decided is I'm going to use the power going to the hallway light as my feed for the loft lighting. And then that will be switched using the switch that I put in the wall earlier. And that goes to this cable, which is just coiled up here at the moment. Okay, so this is the lighting feed that goes down to the hallway light. And this is the switch line that goes to the switch in the wall. And what I actually discovered is that because of the way that the circuits are run upstairs, this is actually the last light in the upstairs circuit. So most of the time you would have a feed coming in and then another feed going out which would go to the next light. But because this is the last light in the circuit we just have one line coming into the light and then the switch feed. So what I've done is I've then added another line coming out again and that then goes to this connector block which basically connects to this cable which is going to be what I'm going to use to connect the lights. And here we have the switch feed coming in on the second cable here and that goes down to the switch on the wall that I wired a couple of days back. So basically the feed comes in here, goes back through the switch, comes back in here and then out to the loft lights. So that will then go into this little connection box that I've secured onto the joist here um, and that will just keep everything nice and safe. And then I can wire this cable up to the lights in the top of the roof. 
Success, we have light. So we have my cables running into my little junction box there. And then from there, it goes all the way up here, up here, along there, into the first light fitting. That's then connected to a loop of cable which goes all the way along and down to a second light over there. Pretty simple, and now we have light in the loft, which we can control from a switch downstairs on the wall. Very convenient. These lights are not very powerful, so I think I'm going to probably change these bulbs out for something a little bit stronger. But actually, you can see pretty well up here. And because the lights are mounted so high up in the roof, you can actually see right down to the corners, which is very handy. So the next job will be to basically do some more work on actually boarding this out so that we can use it for storage. Um, but that will be a job for a later date. But for now, that's pretty much job done. Thank <laughs> you.